Money Man, it's your boy Philip Bro. I'm in the house with Visual Life Music Group. Getting it everything together, you know, rapping everything up. Just wanna let y'all know what's happening with me. First of all, you know, I used to be one half of the group, paper spray you know what I'm saying? Now, one third of the group, black collar hustlers, half of the duo, Philip Bro and Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? Hustle with you, you know. Money Rich CEO, you know, in the back and you brought the pips, slap shots for the tracks, you know what I'm saying? Hey, how you doing? This is k -Lu. k -Lu Studio started in Richmond in about 80, 85. I started in a band. I was lead of a, a group back in the day called Kajamin. And one of the things that I told myself is that if I ever made any kind of money, I was going to start a recording studio. Because at that time in Richmond, the only studios you could record out of was Fantasy Studios and a and a very known small Richmond studio called Starlight Sound. Starlight Sound, we used to record at Starlight. Well, my, me personally, I used to record in the evenings, graveyard, like 11 at night till 7 in the morning. And that was 75 bucks an hour. So you can imagine, during the daytime, it was $150 an hour. So I said to myself, if I ever got any kind of money from this game, I would start my own studio and start recording people at a cheaper price. I know how hard it would be. So I did. Uh, uh, Jamie made a little bit of money. We, we had a hot single out in the Bay We did a lot of the Bay Area shows as a band. You know, we had to learn to play your own stuff. Made a little bit of money, so I got me some equipment. Built a little studio in my mom's garage, and I started recording a lot of cats. And then from there, uh, I met Master P. Was one of my very first clients in my mom's garage. We just clicked from that point. We were together like 20, 20 years. <laughs> Something is stupid. Uh, uh, at that point, my business started getting a little bit too much big for my mom's garage, so I moved to my first studio on Barry. And Kalo Studios was born. And I started, uh, some of the first acts I, I met was In Too Deep. And from the success of the Into Deep project, they liked the way I recorded, they liked the sound that I was getting. Because being an old deep in a band, you had to make sure that sound was right. And at that time, people weren't getting the right sound in their home. Not to be people at home studios, but they weren't getting the right sound. So from that point, I met, from, from, from having Into Too Deep in the studio, I met E-40. Uh, I call him Skinny 40, because he was real skinny. And said, not skinny, but he was thin. Think of E-40, maybe uh, 150 pounds lighter. That's my dude. I know he was probably like, yeah. That, that was true. But when I met him, the first thing he said was, uh, man, I'm different. I'm different. And I didn't know what he quite meant until he started rapping. I said, damn, you are different. You rapping off beat. Right? <laughs> so he said, no, nah, that's the style I want. I, re uh, I commend him for keeping, you know, even though everybody told him, hey man, that's off. You know, he kept his guns. He, this is my style. This is what I'm going to do. So uh, from that point on, I started recording other acts. Uh, even Run DMC came to that studio, believe it or not. Profile Records was the label that Into Deep was on. And Profile was the home of Run DMC. And Corey Robinson, who was the CEO of that label, decided to, hey, let's try to revive Run DMC's career, send him back to the West Coast, where these guys just had their big gold record. You know, these guys came out, they were a little cocky, because, you know, they run DMC, legendary. And they figured, hey, they did it, because Corey Robinson asked them to do it. But, hey, when they got here, it was just, you know, they really didn't want to be here. They stayed here three days, but uh, it was a joy working with them. They, just to watch them so professional to get on the mic two guys at one time and never would mess up that was something at that time i didn't have never seen before so i met philip brome he was in a group called paper scrapers with his uh, uh one of his boys uh facelift and uh we worked on a, a few few songs uh, uh turned out to be a uh, great project and people know me through my years throughout the business, I've met a lot of guys, got a lot of relationships. I can hook up a lot of things. So I hooked them up with Koch Records. They loved it. Uh, what had happened, the situation didn't really work the way they wanted to work because they had different visions and, and Koch was going through their many things, but hey, it, was a, it was a wonderful thing. They learned a lot from that situation. And they decided, or Philip decided to take some time off get all his P's and Q's together, get the business straight. 
you know, because, you know, as he understands, music business is 90% business, 10% talent. With that philosophy, this is what he decided to do, come back until he got his business straight. The talent was there, without no question. But the business had to be straight. If your business ain't straight, you're not going nowhere. I don't care how talented you are. It's going to be the sorriest guy with the best business that's going to make it and leave the most talented guy with the worst business nowhere. You know what I mean? So he figured that out. We just got together, worked on a few projects now, new group of guys. Um, I guess what, about, we've been working together for about you know, almost a couple of years on these last couple of projects. So some of the projects I've been working with, with uh, Philip Brown's new company, Money Rich Entertainment, what? it's gonna be what real big, strong. trust me. Uh, a lot of stuff that he's man. doing, it, it really brings back a lot of uh, feelings that I had with the No Limit situation. I, nothing has topped that yet, and I feel this is on its way because we're doing, doing the same thing. It's like a more of a family atmosphere type situation. Cause, you know, it's money rich family situation. Black collar hustlers got a project coming out. Uh, also, we got a, a hustle and a gentleman with, with Ty Gibson, who's, who's the voice of the, of the label. Uh, actually, working on a solo project by him right now. So the first product, the project that's going to be coming out is the PAT Hustle with Philip Rowe's solo project. It's really going to kick everything off. Like I said, in my life, no limit. He is the main thing to kick it off. He came back with the whole TRU, which, uh, like I said, which is the uh, I don't know, you know, my album is doing it right now. He has been talking to me. He's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of money. Google Play. Amazon MP3. Ten feet through the nose. Over a million people in the game. easy to follow the same old format and it's hard to be that dude to step to the side and say I'm gonna do some different shit so you know in order to make this industry exciting we need more people doing different shit you know what I'm saying 
so niggas don't all sound the same, you know, because that shit gets boring and it makes rap boring. So you definitely got to be an originator, originator and an innovator in the game, especially coming out the Bay, because the Bay is known for every different type of sound possible. So when you attack the game, you know, you really need to think about how you're going to come because that's going to be a lasting effect and cats is going to see how you came in. If you come in weak, you're going to go out quick. And if you come in biting other cats, you're going you're gonna to last as long as they last. You come in with your own shit, you'll be like too short. You last forever. You feel me? Yeah. So be original, whatever you do. I've been doing for about four years. I've been doing this thing, you know, we met a couple of years ago, about four years ago. He came to me and said he wanted to uh, start developing his craft and shoot, shoot some projects and stuff. And, uh, you know, we had a couple setbacks. We shot a couple videos, but there was a few setbacks in the editing process, so I'm trying to tighten him up on this situation right now. What? What it is though, we in this bitch, man, for sure, for real. Be legit and feel a bro, I'm about to get down on these clowns. Fuck niggas got to say now, not a motherfucking thing. Exactly, not a motherfucking thing. Uh, let's get it, man. Yeah. Angelo Perez, director, producer, 